Hey, hey, what's going on, fight fans? This is Sean with Boxing and Basketball. Uh, here with my co-host Alejandro Nomas Boxing, and with our special guest today, Lamar, the Boxing Q Russ. Lamar, I know you're probably a little shocked because before it was Boxing Socialist. In January this year, we switched to Boxing and Basketball because a lot of people was like, man, we love basketball too. And I found out this culture, boxing and basketball is the top two that our culture loves. Yeah, that's why I, I was wondering. I was like, man, you was a big hit with boxing and socialists. So, I mean, but they, listen, everything calls for a change. Same thing with me, man. Uh, we'll get into that as well, too. So. Right, right. And listen, and, and it actually it, it ended up working out better with uh, boxing and basketball. I had like one or two um, basketball. Uh, guests on so far, so it worked out pretty good. Uh, but without further ado, the boxing cue Lamar Russ, man, you're 17 and three, eight knockouts out of Wilmington, North Carolina. Just a uh, happy belated birthday, you just turned 35 in January, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I appreciate you, brother. Yep, yep, no problem. Man. And listen, happy for, those birthday. Know, man, I, for those that don't know, man, I met Lamar, um, here in Houston. He was here at the Plex Gym, I believe, and he was helping yeah. Edwin Rodriguez get ready for the Andre Ward fight, I believe. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, listen, that fight, I think I told you back then, I said, Lamar, that's a tough fight. Even though Edwin's tough, and it went on to prove, man, that Andre Ward ended up being one of the top best pound for pound in our sport, and he retired on top. Uh yeah. But, but you end up meeting uh, Andre Ward, and we're going to talk about that in the contender, right? Um, your last fight, Lamar, was in April 2018. And I didn't even know at the time that they were still doing contender-type series, right? So tell yeah, us. Yeah, man, it was kind of a shock, man. Um, yeah, tell, 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 tell us how. I'm sorry. Tell, tell us how you even got brought into that. Who contacted you? And what was your first thoughts when you're like a contender? Like, what was your thoughts? Well, at first, when I first thought, I heard about it, I was like, I'm ready to do it. Let's rock out. But, you know, more importantly, um, at that time, like I said, I was one of the most promising middleweights at that time. And, you know, um, had a, I had a loss or two. But more importantly, that it was like, hey, he's definitely very competitive and definitely probably one of the best middleweights in the world right now in the top 100 so. You know, they interviewed me. I told them what I've been through and, more importantly, what my goals were. And it matched up with the skills with everybody else as well, too. So it definitely put me on. And, right, so tell me the difference because I'm thinking about a contender, right? Because I had um, – I talked we, – we just interviewed – what was that, like a week or two ago? Um, Alejandro um, Cornelius K-9 Bundrich, right? Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. and, and we talk about this whole contender series, right? So, tell us the difference between actually having a regular fight held by a promoter versus being on a contender where it's like uh, it's like reality TV. So, give us some background on what's that like and what happens. Uh, what well, what do we see on screen that we don't see off screen when you're in that type of environment and setting? Man, I'm glad you asked that because a lot of people be getting that mixed up. Has that they think everything they see on TV is actually live. Man, some of the, excuse my language. Now go ahead. Some of the stuff that happens on them, man, that shit be rehearsed and people putting on fronts and you know, what I mean, I'll just be real with you because I'm always on the yellow team, but I was cool with everybody on the blue team. And I'm gonna be honest with you, I got into it. With a couple guys on the yellow team, you know what I'm saying? Oh wow! I mean, it was. I mean, at the end of the day, man. I mean, it is. It is. I mean, we we on a decent page now, and everybody see out of eye. But I mean, the way the situation happened, I mean, I'm gonna be real with you. When I, I was chosen to fight first, because they said, "Oh, you so-called want to be captain," which I wasn't chosen to be. Right. But more importantly, it was just like, man, like you got to be smart. You let these guys, uh, and you know. Me and my guy Michael Moore, we were real tight. He was on yeah. the blue team, but he was like, man, I got in your boy's head. I told him to make sure they picked you first because we knew you was a little bit overweight. I'm like, bro, at the end of the day, they made it hard for their damn self. You know what I'm right. saying? So we had already agreed that Shane was going to go up and fight first. And, 
You know what I mean? With that being said, uh, last minute, I guess he got cold feet. You know, I mean, I'm not sure what happened. Um, but more importantly, man, it was, it was a lot of rehearsed and backdoor shit, and people wasn't really aware of what's going to take place long term because what they didn't understand is if we got the win, we chose how what everything happened from there. Right. So, so, so Lamar, so, so, so if a man wasn't on, if a man wasn't on weight, you should have made that man fight first. You'd have made somebody that's already was already on weight. You know right. what I'm saying? So then we could have got the win, and then we could have picked who we want to fight. But they got finesse. I mean, it is what it is. And I ended up tipping the bone in my elbow in the um, first round against John Thompson. I'm not gonna say John Thompson is better than me. But he was the better man that night because of some fact of um I definitely didn't get the win because that's hit the bone in my elbow. But I mean, so yeah, yeah, and, and 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 that's what I want to ask you about. So you're watching a fight, right? And we and, and we see it, and then next thing you know, we see it get stopped. And as they're announcing a the winner, we see your arm kind of stuck out like sideways. Like was was there like a chip or any issues right before that, or did that actually happen live during the fight? It actually happened live during the fight because. I remember it because I had caught him with that right hand, boom. And then when I dropped him, I'm like, yeah. So, you know, I got an overly excited, man. Cause I'm like, yo, right. it's a contender show. What the fuck? I just really just got them drop this man. Because John Thompson's not a poo-poo. Now, nah, let's be real. Right, right. right. No, nah, he's, nah, he's not a poo-poo. But more importantly, but I knew I knew I was a better fighter than him. I just didn't expect to drop him as early. So then right. more importantly, on top of that, uh, I threw a punch. I mean, I guess I threw it the wrong way. And at the same time, I mean, I hurt my arm, and I was trying to fight with it like that, but I ain't going to lie to you. Like I said, John Thompson is a poo-poo. He's not sorry. So with right. that being said, I mean, I mean, it was a handicap match. And with right. that being said, I mean, he got the best of me. I mean, that, I mean, I give him his respect. But I know for a fact, if we both healthy, even right now, I mean, at 54, 58, 60, 60, I would, I would stop right. John Thompson with no if, and buts about it. So, so being that y'all in that closed environment, after the fight, you get checked out, the doctors work with you, this and that, and y'all go back. What does he say to you behind the scenes, or is that something you can't really talk about? As far as the... Like, hey, man, I see you're hurt. Man, I wish you could have went further. Like, was there anything man, said listen, afterwards? One thing about John Thompson is, John Thompson is a... I mean, I can't really... I can't say he's selfish, you know, I don't know him outside of boxing, but from there, he was just, I mean, he did what I would have did. I mean, I, I, he ain't had really much to say to me because he, he right. got the win, he got the money, and more importantly, he's going to the next round. So he really didn't say nothing to me. I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, I probably wouldn't say nothing to me either, but at the end of the day, it is what it is, so. So um, let, me, let, me, let me ask this. It's ironic. This one was so ironic for me. Was that you were sparring, uh, uh, helping getting Edwin ready for Andre Ward? You know, I'm looking up and watching the show, and Andre Ward is on the show, right? So, what's some of the things that Andre did? He talk to you personally? Did he talk to y'all? Did he give y'all some advice? Like, what was it like having him there? Or was he really there? Or was it he was just there for like a couple of hours for the TV, and then you didn't see him again? Hey, man, one thing you said about Andre Ward is, man, that's one of the most humblest. Okay. Gifted. Okay. God fearing. Okay. Awesome dudes I've ever met in life. Not not only in boxing, but in life. <clears throat> One thing about him is, man, um, he's straight up, he's blunt. He don't play no games. He'll definitely show you. He'll give you the goddamn um, he he give you the plan. He'll motivate you. He'll spend time with you. He'll okay. work out with you. He even sparred a couple rounds with some of the guys coming up. Oh, wow. Life. You know, like, that's probably one of the best guys in boxing I've met this far. Like, I mean, wow. no lie to you. Every time I see him, um, whether it's social media or if I run into him in person or whatever, uh -huh. I mean, I took my hat off to that man. And then more importantly, what he's done in boxing, you know, because a lot of people retire because their body can't take it or more importantly because of some of the fact of they're not just going nowhere. That man mm -hmm. retired on his own free will, not because of money. Right. He did right. it because of some of the fact of that's what he wanted to do. Right. But the game still misses him. He right. did it because he wanted to. So that's, I mean, I'm going to be real with you. Everybody say, mm -hmm. you know, Floyd is a great guy. Don't give me his well. I, I know Floyd as well, too. But when I come, when I look at my era, who's one of the greatest boxers of all time, in my era, I would have to say it would be goddamn on Andre Ward because of what he's done, 
what he's accomplished, and the way he left the game. You know, what I mean? look, 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 Lamar, Lamar, I'm glad you said that because you, you'd be surprised how many people are argued with when I said Andre Ward to me was a better pound for pound fighter, in my opinion. So, I'm so not to take away from Floyd 50 and 0, right? So, he fought like 17, 18 world champions. You can't take that away from him, right? They both retired undefeated, right? And of course, Floyd made more money than anybody, not just Andre Ward, right? Yeah. But I tell I tell people, do you know how? And people say, well, why do you? He was only like, what was it like, forty and zero or something like that, or 37, 38 and zero? Mm-hmm. But they're like, why would you rank him better than Floyd? I said because from the age eleven and twelve, he never lost a fight. I said, you know how hard it is to be an amateur fighter, never lose since eleven years old, win all those amateur fights, win a gold medal, and turn around and win every fight as a pro. Floyd that's had losses as amateur. Yeah, that's a blessing, though. You know what I mean? That Floyd was right behind him. Lamar, him Lamar, Lamar, tell me one other fighter that was a world champion, retired and undefeated, that has never lost a fight since they're 11 years old. I mean, there ain't nobody. <laughs> exactly. There ain't nobody. So, yeah. Now, I definitely get you on that. That's why I said what I said. But, um, yeah, Ward is a stand-up guy, though, man, all the way around. I mean, he's not going to change for you before – in front of the TV or off the TV. He just stand up guy. I mean, he 100. Right. I mean, you know what I mean? Me and this with this. I mean. Oh, and Lamar, let me ask you this. Rest in peace, Nazim Richardson. Mm. Uh, what was it like having Nazim there? And did he pass on it any information or how was he? So let me be real with you. A lot of yeah, people be real. Back there, man. Um Nazim, that 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 was wars. But but he loved Nazim, man. Okay. Nazim loved war. Okay. But I'm going to be honest with you. Me and Nazim didn't get along. Okay. So with that being said, it was just kind of like a little bit of tension in between us. But I mean, um, <clears throat> I respect him. I definitely respect him because of what he's done. Who sure. I mean, his Rock and Tiger, there's some dogs. You know what I'm saying? Um, oh man, people don't boxing. people don't even know about Rock and Tiger, man. Yeah, but yeah, but that, that's because they don't know boxing. They just know right what they know or what's relevant. Hold, hold, hold on, real quick. Hold on, that, real, um, hold on, real quick. Uh, no miles boxing, Alejandro. Do you know who Rock and Tiger Allen is from out of Philly? I do not. I was I was listening. And I was about to Google it. Man, one of two of the most greatest amateurs there was in that era but it could they couldn't translate i think one of them got an accident right they yeah, weren't getting an accident got, yeah. right yeah yep. and they weren't able to translate into the pro like they wanted to but definitely one of the top two amateurs ever was look them up when you get a chance but i'm sorry go ahead lamar go ahead and finish but um me and nazim we just didn't hit it off like that man um and one thing about Nazim, he's very, very blunt too, just like Ward, but more importantly, he's just more aggressive. He's a little older. So you always gotta show that respect, you know. And um, it's just the way he came off to me, it was just a little different. So I can't sit here and say, hey, I got all the wisdom from him. But one thing I can say about him, man, um, he was definitely dedicated to his job because like I said, I had to lose two pounds last minute. He he didn't leave me there. He got dang on, was with me the whole night, even though I I could have did it myself. Right. He was there with me the whole nine, and I appreciate him for that. And God bless him and his right. family, you know. Right. But um, I mean, I can't really say man him was the best of friends and the closest. Sure, sure. You know what I mean, but um, yeah, I mean, but 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 I, I definitely hate what happened to him though. So. Right, right. And L- Lamar, um, so <clears throat> in that environment, right? Of course, because of his father the great Sugar Shane Mosley. A lot of pressure, a lot of eyes on Sugar Shane Mosley Jr. Was it real? Was people really gunning for him like that? Or was that really TV? Or did people really want to take out the name? Listen to me, man. Listen to me. (laughs) Coming in there, they so called they 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 agreed on Lamar the team captain because I had a lot of experience this and that. I never told myself I was gonna be the team captain. First off, that's what a lot of people don't understand. Yeah. Second off Shane, Shane was nervous as hell, and me and Ray was even a little timid. I mean, everybody was literally gunning for him. Well, not really everybody, but only, I mean, um, what's my guy's name? Um, 
The first guy he fought. Uh-huh. Um, he was gunning from from New York. Let me see. Um, uh, what's my boy name? Um but let me let me do this because this actually goes on um it's on box rec. So let me pull it up here. Shane Mosley, how do I find you? Yeah, Shane Mosley Jr. Yeah. yeah, can't go with. There we go. Shane Mosley Jr. What year was this again? This was 2018. 2018. 2018. 2018. They had an eye here against uh, Devon Lee. Oh, yeah, Devon Lee. Yeah, Devon Lee. Lee. Yeah. So Devon Lee, so this is how it went down. We already agreed to the yellow team and the blue team. So we did our own thing. It was like, boom. Shane was like, well, I'm going to call on Devon Lee. And Devon Lee was calling Shane out. So we was like, all right, cool. I made my way, but I said, I right, see so y'all playing first, but let me go ahead and give me a little fruit bowl. <laughs> yeah. Man, I get the fruit bowl. Then they want to switch it up last minute. I'm like, bro, I'm overweight. And ask me, it won't be overweight. That's going to throw us in behind. But Navar Lee wanted Shane Moses so bad, but he didn't want him before the contender because of some fact of his name. Yeah. So with that being said, I mean, I mean, I guess when they so-called try to get me, when I, when I got the fight for it, Shane was kind of nervous. He was like, no, no, you go first. You go first. You go to the boat. <laughs> so, I mean, I ain't knocking him. I mean, it is what it is. Everybody first time in the contender and trying to figure out what's what. So, I ain't right. knocking him. But, I mean, one thing about it is Shane got dang on um, with his nerves, him being humble. And that shit took him a long way because he knocked, if you, if you watch the contender, he knocked Devon Lee out. Right. You know, and, um, being real with you, I mean, Shane, from that fight on, I mean, Shane stepped his game up. I really do think against Michael Moore, it was some bullshit. I really think Michael Moore beat him. But with the right. fact of him being Shane Mosley's son, I think they right. kind of gave him the upper hand. But, I mean, it was a good competitive fight. But, I mean, right. I really think uh, Michael beat him. I think mean, Moore beat him. But, uh, I mean, I mean, who am I? I'm just right. a guy. Watch. <laughs> right. Uh, I'm, go ahead, Alejandro. Uh, I got some more questions, but I'll let you go ahead. Uh, real quick, we got somebody, um, Jizzle910, salute Lamar. All right. Sean, it seems like I'm having a little bit of issues. I'm going to log in and out. I'm going to go on my phone because okay. I could barely hear you guys. All right, no problem. All right, so, so Lamar. So, um... Like I said, when I first met you and you were there helping sparring, uh, let me change the screen real quick since he got out. Um, you know, we talked about you being Triple G's uh, sparring partner at the time. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, you let me know how, how real it was when you y'all would get down in Big Bear, right? Yeah. So man. since that yeah. since that time, I didn't get it. We haven't talked. So give me your thoughts on that first Triple G Canelo fight and then the second fight. Who do you think won both fights? So listen, the first fight I hands down I think Gennady Golovkin won. Right. Um, that's how I had it. That. The second fight I really thought it should have been a draw. Draw. That's how I had it. But the thing about it is you gotta understand, man. Um Canelo got some strong people behind him, man. And right. Think about this, man. He got Oscar De La Hoya, man. I mean, that's honestly. And before war, that was the last Olympic gold medalist we had, correct? Right, right. So with that being said, he made his mark in in the boxing scene. I mean, you got to understand what's going on. Like, he's the cash cow as of right now. And the right. thing about it is, right, even when he fight Triple G this last time, it may, it's probably going to be a real even fight because right. of who's promoting the fight, the zone. With that being right. said, there's money behind both of them. And they know right. that if Triple G takes another loss to Canelo, he's done. And so right. with that being said, in order for them, in order for them to make more money out for that fight, they're gonna either give it a draw or they give Kennedy Golovkin one more win. So one more win. Right. So and, uh, and, and and Lamar, I hate to say it. I think right now, I think right now that triple uh, Canelo, Canelo is actually catching or is going to catch uh, Triple G in the late stage of his career, the inactivity of not fighting that much is going to hurt him. And I think if they fight for a third time, um, I think that Canelo is definitely going to be a clear winner in the third fight. 
I ain't gonna lie to you. I was thinking the same thing. I honestly, I thought, I thought about Canelo even stopping uh, Ganeviki, but I mean, possibility. I mean, yeah, man. Because one thing about Gennady Golovkin, man, um, that mug was hitting like a fucking. He, he was punching, man. Yeah, you know, back in 2011 and 12, man, he was. He was in his prime and he was punching. And I like right. I told you before, I, I've seen him in uh, him in Canelo Spar back then. You know, right. Canelo came to Big Bad getting ready for Shane Mosley. I've seen right. it. I've seen it. So I know exactly what happened, but Canelo's a different dog right now. You know, yeah, so, now. Yeah, now he's definitely yeah, he's, a, he's a, a pound. To me, he's the pound for pound fighter right now. Yeah, but but you know, the only person that'll beat him right now, honestly. Who's that? Benavidez, I think the only person in the right at 168. That's right. That's what I think. I mean, I think yeah. uh Charlo, you know Maul. You well, you you knew that even when I was in right. Maul, my boy. That's my guy. Right. right. I don't think that uh, I think Maul could I think Maul put up a good fight with him. Right. I really do. Um but, but I never get the decision. I would have definitely with the decision because right. of the money and because of the simple fact of how close it'll be. Yeah, because Maul will definitely do his thing against him, but I think Benavidez mm -hmm. is the the fighter that can beat him just by his style, you know. But um, right. But Charlo Marlon that Marlon Benavidez would be a great fight as well too. Oh yeah, style make fight. So, right. You know, I take my I, I take my boy Maul on that one all day. So right. All right, now Lamar. Now we got caught up on all that stuff. Now let's focus on you, Lamar. So yes. you haven't fought since 2018. Was part of that uh, – this is going to be a three-part question, so you can answer however you want. Was part right. of that because of the pandemic? And then number two, when I last interviewed you, you were signed with Lou DiBella. So mm -hmm. who are you with now? Why haven't you fought since 2018? And what are your plans? All right, so um, one of the main reasons why I haven't fought since – the contender um, was because of the fact that I took that bone in my elbow. And being mm -hmm. real with you, man, um, those arm injuries, elbow injuries, man, a lot of people can't bounce back from them. Oh, wow. So that being said, um, I had to take that. I got the, I got the surgery during like maybe seven months after. And I took like a year and a half off. And um, I got back in the gym and I was feeling good. I was feeling real good. And um, I messed around and uh, my tendon was still torn. And they didn't know that my tendon was yeah. still tore. They just picked up the chip in the bone. Oh, so wow. I had to sit out again for another almost nine months. So then after that, I mean, I got back healthy. And like I said, in 2021, in January, actually the day after my birthday, I actually got back in the ring. Um, I went to church on New Year's in 2021 and um, prayed to God. And, you know, more importantly, give it all to God and say, hey, look, I'm going to get this thing one more big, one more big push and go go for it hard as I can, you know, and um right. I did that for a whole year and now we're having our first fight back March twenty sixth. Now <clears throat> as far as promoter wise, I'm not promoted by anyone or managed by anyone because promoter wise, um Lou Bella, he's a great guy. You know, and one thing I can say even when I was with Lou, he did it. Lou personally did a good job by me. You know, um right. I definitely say that. Um but more putting my contract in it and and, you know, I don't see Lou sign. I didn't see Lou trying to sign me after my contract, and then I'm injured. I mean, right. you know, with that being said, especially me coming off a loss by like John Thompson, somebody that I should have beat, and that I was beating. But like I said, more importantly, my arm threw me out the window. So, um, more importantly, it was just a fact of uh, all business. Lou is probably one of the best guys I've known and I met right. promoter wise. Right. Uh, so, with that being said, um, I definitely took my hand off the Lou, and I definitely would do back. New business back with Lou. He was just right. that guy to me. Um, right. Like I said, I'm gonna show everybody coming soon. You know, I mean, this yeah. year, here, this 2022 year is gonna be a big, a big year for me to get back on the scene and show guys why I was where I was at. Right. Right. Now, um, <clears throat> far as like um, training wise, man, I'm a lot of things I've learned from when I've been out there with Floyd and been out there with um, Gennady Golovkin and. Even been there for, I learned a lot of stuff. And with that being said, man, um, when I first came back in 2021, I was 200 pounds. You oh, know, wow. Um, like I said, I was depressed. I just had a kid. 
I got yeah. my daughter now. She's two years old, but um, I was depressed by the contender situation. I'm um, had a lot yeah. of personal issues going on. So, with that being said, um, I mean, I just let myself go. But like I said, I took a whole year of focus and get myself back down. And then the first fight back, we could we could make six. But the first fight back, we got a guy because it's hard to get a fight for a guy like me. So we got a guy one sixty eight. Um, March 26th, so after that fight there, we're going to take the next fight at 63 and 60. And the goal, honestly, by the end of the year, is to be at 154. No so, um, yeah, man, I mean, I'm ready. And I'm ready, happy. Not only am I happy, but more importantly, just ready to show the world what I got, man. Because, like I said, I know, man, I'm definitely something to watch out for. And, man, especially at 154, man, I'm going to be a dog. Even at 160, right. though, you know what I mean? So, right. Um, but promoter wise and manager wise, I'm manager free, I'm promoter free, and you know, okay. I got a lot of offers on the table. But one thing about me is, I don't feel like right now is the perfect time for me to sign with anybody. Sure, um, and with that being said, I just want to make sure I sign with the right people because you know, I got a lot of offers people in Vegas, people in Florida, people right. out there in Georgia. I mean, you know, I got a lot of offers, but one thing about it is, I've been around the game for a while so. There's no, there's no real need for me to rush. And we've been a college graduate boxing previously on all the major networks. And I mean, I got a little bit of money saved up. So with that right. being said, I don't need boxing. I don't need the promoter. Well, I, excuse me. I think that I do need a promoter. I right. don't need a manager. As right. of right now, you know, I'm just looking forward to getting back on my feet and seeing what I'm worth. You know what I mean? So right. Uh, so, so this March 26 fight. Tell everybody where it's at and how they can get tickets. Um, the fight's gonna be in Rock Hill, South Carolina. Um, only reason why we did South Carolina is because of some of the fact of um close to home. Say that again. It's kind of close to home, South Carolina, North yeah, Carolina. Yeah, I say yeah, definitely. That's what I was about to say. You know, um, South Carolina is close to uh, North Carolina, and North Carolina, um, boxing mission is shut down at the moment. So with that being oh, said, right. um, we're gonna go okay. to South really? Carolina and. If everything goes as planned, we're gonna be in Virginia, which is right next to North Carolina. Um, hopefully two to three weeks after, you know. So, like I said, we're trying to get on a fast pace and, you know, right. get back to doing what we love to do. But um, if you want to get tickets to the, the fight out in South Carolina in Rock Hill, South Carolina, go to South Park Promotions. Um, that's Billy Blees. Um, he's from Tennessee, but um, South Park Promotions on Instagram, and um, you know, he have the link on there to get the fight. But more importantly, if you come to my page at Boxing Q on Instagram, B O X I N G Q U E underscore, I knew y'all the updates, the fight schedules, and more importantly, um, I'm gonna give away a pair, of, uh, two pair of free tickets to nice. your fans. Nice, nice. Okay, go ahead, Alejandro. You, you switch to your phone. Go ahead. Yeah, I don't know. I'm having little issues. I got a new mic and a new setup, and. It was the first time I tried to set it up. Sorry about that. But I know you, you started going to the gym um, at a young age, at the age of nine. And um, you were training, and then you, you you made the Junior Olympics at the age of 15. Was, always, was boxing always like a sport you were attracted to, or was it just by luck? So one thing about it is, man, me being nine years old, um, my and my mom, my mom and dad got divorced, so I'm originally from Tallahassee, Florida, but I moved to Wilmington, North Carolina, and um, when I was like seven. So my mom actually started working with the city at the boxing center mm -hmm. when I was nine, and um, she didn't want us running around, you know, in the neighborhoods getting in trouble because we didn't know anybody. And it was me and my two brothers. So um, she said, "Hey, y'all want to box?" And I was only I was the oldest one, but you had to be nine to start boxing. Under the late Sheridan Morgan, which I love that guy to death. But um, more importantly, man, um, I ended up taking the sport up, and it actually changed my life, man. Um, I used to have D's and F's, and ended up being an honor roll, straight honor roll student since like third grade, all the way till I graduated college. You know, so nice. that being said, man, um, boxing played a big, a very, very, very big part of my life. So, um, it, and, and what, you know, what that, was it about boxing? What was it about boxing that made you like want to do better in school and get better grades and actually like put more effort to it? I mean, it sounds crazy, but uh, 
the one thing about it is, man, um, like I said, my mom been a single parent with three, with three. Well, actually, it was four, but my sister moved back. Me and a single parent, we was all we all a year apart. So my sister is 36. I'm 35. My brother's 34. My other brother's 33. Um, <clears throat> with that being said, man, I mean, a single parent, we don't got the best stuff in the world, and we 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 sharing clothes and. You know, we all get our pair of shoes. So with that being said, it was just like, yo, that was my outlet. And that was my way to, you know what I mean, um, try to make it successful and make my mom's life a whole lot easier as well, too. So, um, And then more importantly, like I said, I, I didn't get to travel like that because of the situation. And boxing took me all across the United States, you know what I mean? Um, I've probably been in about, about every state, almost every state in the U.S., you know what I mean? So with the amateur nice. going to the nationals and, Paying for this, paying for that, flying me. Actually, boxing is the reason why I got on my first plane ride. You know. Mm. So. Oh wow! And you, you know, Alejandro, what I like about well, that I personally know about Lamar Russ and Juan Diaz. Those are the only two fighters that I've met personally know that both of them got their uh, degrees. And, yeah. and correct me if wrong, yours from Fay Fayetteville, right? And yeah, it's sir, business, Fayetteville. business administration. Fayetteville State. Yeah, State Bronco Pride, man. Um, I'm in the business administration with a concentration in general business. So, yeah. <clears throat> and look, that's rare. There's only very few boxers that I know that actually not only botched but took time to get their education. And I think was it about three or four, three or four months ago? I don't know if you realize Alejandro or Lamar, even um Jesse Vargas mm -hmm. um, from out of California. I mean, he's running to be a politician now. Mm, uh, like, yeah. Wow, this is this yeah, is crazy. Right See, the one thing that people don't understand, though, man, with boxing is you got to have a plan before, and during, and after. You right. know what I mean? If you don't got a plan, then, I mean, how, how, how can you be successful in boxing alone? You know, that's even mm -hmm. with boxing. When you're in a fight, you got to have a plan. Right. So, for me, you know, it was just like, look, I'm going to give this thing one more strong shot. I'm going to go as far as I can, which I know I'm going to go far. But more importantly, like outside of that, man, um, I got a, I got a bachelor's degree. I got a little bit of experience in my job, in my job field. So with that being said, um, I'm actually gonna own something. Or more importantly, um, just just work my way up. I got a frat brother. Um, I don't know if you. Matter of fact, you you guys should know. Do you ever heard of um? Uh, what is it? What is it? What is it? What is it? It's a burger restaurant that just been bought out by African American in uh, Houston. Um. Uh, Ah, what is it? His name yeah, is Burger Perkins. Perkins. He just bought out um, Fud Workers. Oh, Fud oh. Workers. Oh, he did. I didn't know that. He just bought Fud Workers. Nicholas, what's his last name? Perkins. P E R K I N S. Nicholas Perkins. And one thing about that gentleman, he went to Howard. He's a Howard University alum. Nah, but he, he graduated, started, his, uh, he got his bachelor's at Fayetteville State University. And wow, he was, he was, acquires 18 million Fuddruckers franchise. Wow. One thing about that guy there, let me yeah. tell you about this guy, man. You would never know this gentleman has money. You would never know this gentleman is at that place in his life where he at. <clears throat> He's wow. the coolest, respectfulest, humblest guy I know. And you know what's so crazy? Yeah. And they have, when I turned pro, you know, just getting started, I was like, hey, asking a couple of my frat brothers are looking for sponsors. You know, uh -huh. one day he called me up and said, hey, what do you need? From that, I mean, I, I, I he'll kick my butt if I tell you, but um, let's just <laughs> say this, man. He definitely took care of me numerous times without right. me having to ask. And one wow. thing about he was always there for me in my corner. And I respect and look at and love that guy to death, man. And one thing about him is, man, um, He's basically a mentor to me and showing me exactly what needs to take place as far as in life. So he said, Lamar, you're you're definitely a boxer. Okay, mm -hmm. you're good at that. Okay. But what's next? What's after boxing? Right. You know, and I just look at what he does and how he moves and example that he sets up for going forward. I mean, he's just a great guy. So Lamar, I, I see it. Houston, too. Lamar, I see it right here too. It says, um, Perkins earned a Master's of Business Administration, an MBA from the Long Respected University, and a Bachelor's of Science and Business Administration and Management from Fayetteville State University. Yep. And he's one of the best fraternities there is. Omega Sci Phi. <laughs> 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 
Arr, 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 arr. <laughs> nah, but uh, one thing about him is, though, you, you know it's so crazy with that gentleman, though, man. What's that? One one thing about him is, so one thing me, I, when I met him, I was still, I think it was like 2011. We, well, we always knew each other, but I actually sat down and talked to him. And you may be in a queue, you know, I try to throw the cute word up in there, like, yeah, big bro, you know, I'm the bros. You know what he told me, huh? What's that? He said, listen, I don't, he said, I love being accused, but I don't care about that shit right now. This yeah. is business. And you know what? Right. He lives by that. He don't do nothing yeah. for you just because you're cute. On what right. you got. He does stuff because he's got a great, kind heart. And he's just an right. awesome guy, man. And one thing about that guy there is, man. That's why he gets so many blessings. But that man, and one thing about it is, if you know, like, I follow him on Instagram, social media, and talk to him from time to time. That man hangs around a lot of younger people that's like 25, 27, 30, 22. People that's trying to make him their life. He's mentoring right. them. Right. And actually showing them the way. So that's where he spent most of his time at, on top of his business. So he gets so much respect for me. Q, I got a question for you. You said you had some money saved and put it aside. Let me ask this, though. But if you had, and I don't know what you have, but if you had $250,000 left to your name and Nicholas came along and said, listen, bro, I'm about to get on this Fred Rutgers franchise. You know, I got investors from all over. I know you from, from back in the day. Do you want to get on this $250,000? I would do would it. You, you would do it? With you no believe you believe asked. you believe in him that much. Listen, with no questions asked. One reason why? One why? thing about Nick is man, if he, he know how to make money. If he, if he, he know how to make money, but if he tell you something, yeah, he stand on it and he know how to get to it. That's no if and buts about it. I wouldn't even second guess it. I would say, I would say you want to cash out. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, go ahead, Alejandro. You had something else. I had a couple more questions, but I'll let you go ahead, Alejandro. So, how was your experience in the Junior Olympics? Man, you know it's so crazy. That Junior Olympics is actually what pushed me to actually want to continue to box and go hard. Because you know, when I turned fifteen, when you see, when you looked on there, and I fought in the, um, the Junior Olympic Nationals. You know, the first that was my first loss. I went fifty and zero. And you know, well, you, man, you went loss, fifty and zero as an amateur without a loss. Yes, sir. You know who wow. my first loss was to? Who? Brandon Rios. Oh, wow. 112 pounds. Brandon oh, Rios. wow. And I wanted him to get his ass back so bad. <laughs> and he never grew, and you kept growing. He, exactly. That's exactly what happened. Yeah, he never grew, and I just kept growing, man. So. Have you ran in, in in these years, these previous years? Have you ran into him at different places and y'all chopped it up about man, that? That's the one fight I never really ran into. Like that's crazy. When me being oh, out wow. there in Cali and Vegas, I never really ran into him. That's wild. Okay. Yeah, that's crazy. Go ahead, Alejandro. So, how long like how how is the North Carolina like right here in San Diego? I'm from San Diego and. Uh, we got a lot of gyms out here. Um, we have like the Canelo camp and then the Benavides camp is training in San Diego. How's the, the how can I say, the the boxing atmosphere over there with gyms and all that in North Carolina? Um, just being honest with you, man, um, boxing in North Carolina is in the best. We're growing. I mean, we got a lot of good fighters out here, like um, Jamar Freeman, who's been one of my great – like my, we actually look alike. We call each other the twin brothers. So, Jamar Freeman, um, Blake Mansfield, uh, he signed. I think he signed with uh, Kings Promotion. I'm not, no, don't quote me on it. But he's a good fighter. Then you got um, Levante Early, who's out of Charlotte, North Carolina. Then you got um, Michael Williams Jr., who just lost his first fight, little step up fight. With I think he about he bust back at um. We got one guy from Charlotte. I can't think of his name right now. Um, uh, what's my guy's name, man? Um, well, one thing about it, I mean, North Carolina is coming up. So, with that being said, as far as camps, like what you mentioned before, we don't have that just yet. 
because you know with that being said a lot of people don't come here because of the fact of they don't come here because of the fact it was so small and there's not a lot of involvement but i mean we're definitely getting up the ladder stepping up the ladder to make it happen no that one fighter that's doing really good as well too is stevie massey i take my hat off to that guy that's his name stevie massey he's a great fighter man okay um, real good fighter Lamar, let me ask you, that fight that you're going to have in South Carolina, uh, do you think there's a possibility? Because we're talking about boxers in different states. Do you think there's a possibility that Paul Williams might show up there? I mean, one thing about Paul is, I, 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 I see my hands to Paul as well, too. Um, Paul isn't, isn't too good to go nowhere, to show up anywhere, you know what I mean, in the public space or anywhere. So I wouldn't be surprised if he did. Um, okay. Because you I mean I, that that's kind of his backyard, you know. He's from Aiken, right? So, with that being said, me in his backyard, but um, <clears throat> I don't think he can in a little fast before. So yeah, I can't right, right. say. But you know, my mission right now is man, um, just getting there, and take care of business. So you know, me as far as wondering and wishing and hoping who yeah. I'm gonna see, I, that's out the window for me. How, how, how many rounds is your fight gonna be? Well, I mean, to me and the guy. They don't fight, man. Um, we were, at first, we were going to do six. But, like, I told my coach, I'm like, I'm ready to go eight, you know, um, especially with me bending back up to get back to that level. So, with that being said, I'm not going to say the guy that I'm fighting is the John Thompson or anybody else tough, but he's right. definitely not he's not a walkover. So, right. with that being said, um, we definitely got to push ourselves and train like we're doing now, running in the morning, strength and conditioning. You know what I mean? Then come back working out in the evening and running again at night. So with that being said, um, I mean, we just working, man. We just looking forward to the fight, looking forward to the competition, but more importantly, just looking forward to coming out victorious. Right. And Lamar, my, la my last question for you, and uh, I try to ask a lot of fighters this that we interview now. What is your thoughts on these YouTube, social media guys trying to get in the box and what are your thoughts on this i i personally don't like it but that's just me i mean me, <clears throat> let's say this man i don't like it as well but let's see we don't like a lot of things in life you know what i mean so but this is the thing about it is if oh, hold, hold on lamar lamar let me let me do, let me let me clarify let me tell you the reason why i don't like it all right i don't i don't like it because I don't like the fact these guys coming in here making millions of dollars and making all this money. And y'all have been in here dedicating your whole life, not making nowhere close to the amount of money they're making. And that's, that's my personal reason, you know, why, why I don't like it. So. I mean, right, you're ahead. definitely right about that. I mean, but the thing about it is it still goes back to the fan. It goes back to the work you put in because <clears throat> let's be honest. They're definitely not putting as much work coming from the amateurs to the pros and this and that. But, right. I mean, they're putting that a lot of work in, <clears throat> paying these guys social media-wise, actually popping up, traveling to these spots, talking trash. And, I mean, they're doing the legwork themselves. So, with that being said, I mean, I feel like they're putting a little bit of work in, but they're definitely not putting the work in that the physical work. And I do think it's BS. But at the end of the day, I mean, we as the fans and we as the people – we kind of dictate the popularity that, that they're going to have. Because just think about it. And we wasn't so hell-bent on Jake Paul and this celebrity boxing. I mean, he wouldn't make the money he'd make. Right. And he's down. So right. I think that comes from us as a people to, you know what I mean, to boycott the shit and more important, not only boycott it, but, you know what I mean, show less interest. Same right. thing with MMA. At one point, MMA was one of the hottest things smoking. It actually right. running neck and neck with boxing. But look at right. it now. Right. You know, since yep. the celebrity boxing came upon Jake Paul and I mean I can just say Jake Paul is the face of it. But since right. it came around, MMA is, is third place. Nobody talks about it no more. A right. lot of those fighters yeah. are coming over to boxing. Yep. So with yep. that being said, it's just us as the people who dictate what goes on. Right. All right. Well, fans, there you have it. Lamar Rust, the boxing cue. We'll be fighting March 26th, South Carolina. Please make sure you go to his Instagram. He'll have the poster there. You can get tickets. Uh, Lamar, what do you want to say in closing to the fans and everybody that supported you all this time? I um, mean, I just want to thank everybody that supported me through the good, bad, and the ugly, man. Um, more importantly, man, um, follow me at 
boxing q b o x i n g q u e underscore um and my last but not least man um uh, i just want to call a special request man uh you know yeah. i always tell you man i got a top three of who i always want man uh, yeah tell me first and foremost i want john thompson uh but okay. i think but, but i don't think i ever get john thompson again because i think um he got in a car accident and he's very mentally uh, he's, a, okay. uh, he's about mentally retarded now um and what? Let's go to him. um but more importantly, if not that, man, I would love to get um his Philly native. I mean, uh, excuse me, his Jersey native. Um, ah, uh, what's my man name? He, his last fight was at uh, Kirkland. Uh, what's his name? Uh, no, let me look it up. Glenn Tapia. Oh, Glenn Tapia. Glenn Tapia just returned to the ring as well. He got a lot. Of, he okay. had a layout just as well as I did. So I would love yeah. to get him with Glenn Tapia. Um, if not Glenn Tapia, man, we would love to do Louis Aries. Or you know what I mean? Because the one thing about it is he definitely beat <clears throat> he beat um Jerry Hurd, but um like I said, right. um I would love to get in there with Lewis Harris, man. Uh, Jeff right. Spen Joey Spencer, I would love to get in there with him as well too. Right. But um yeah, man. I mean, we just out here, man. Like I said, we'll take one step at a time, get the first foot out of the way, and then just keep going from there. All oh, right. well, no, the one person I really, right. really, really want. Let me say this. <laughs> Okay. Sergio Martinez. Sergio Martinez just returned as well, too. And oh, I would wow. love to get that fight. That's the fight I'm pushing for mostly right now. Wow. Anything. Sergio, Sergio Martinez. Martinez. All right. Well, I'll make sure you will tag this part of this video on social media and tag all those guys and see if we get a response. Man, especially yeah. Sergio Martinez, man. I would love that fight. <laughs> all right. There you have it, uh, fight fans. The one and only Boxing Q. Out of North Carolina, Lamar Russ, man, thank you for your time. And uh, until next time, man, we'll hit you back up after your fights. All right, man, thank you so much, brother. I appreciate your time. All right, no problem. Take care, brother. God bless. Thank you, Lamar.